know you guys don't like my sunglasses. I but love them. No, you love them because you think they're goofy and it's a good way to make fun of me. Paid $180 for them. 75 years ago. I got these 13 years ago, so That's Jake would have been world. Jake would have been literally the same age he is now, which is five. <laughs> you got super low pressure and windy conditions, kind of warm. All these deer are under the ground. They've all dug holes and they're not coming out. You brought your shovel. No, but I brought Doug Fair and Boss canoe. Doug Zach's dad, by the way. Grab the best suited for 30 degrees. Today it's in the mid 60s. We're gonna stop watching these videos if we keep singing. Oh, I'm that. sorry. I'm one of the worst. Oh yeah, dude, looks just perfect. Oops, almost got stuck. Only got to take it about 30, 40 yards, and we're right, right in the hole. Oh, we're seaworthy. This is the best paddle for this. It'll work. We're down here in the river today, and we got high winds, as you can probably tell which is offering a good amount of noise cover. And the plan is to come in the back door of this particular area. Basically, with all the rain that we've had lately, these river bottoms have been flooded. This river right now is actually pretty deep. We're gonna try to set up overlooking a big CRP field above the river bottom. Much of it is flooded and I'm thinking that it's moved the deer out of these bottoms because they don't want to bed in the water. And if we see some movement in there tonight, we'll pull down and move closer for tomorrow's hunt. See these big red oaks right here? They're dropping, they're falling on this side hill and deer walking the side hill, browsing on the acorns that are rolling down this hill. See one right here. That's what that big buck that Jake and I put the stalk on was eating a few weeks ago. You can just see where the, all the deer have been riding here, walking this trail along the edge. I'm going to take this trail in there, try to get to some bedding. That hillside over there is all bedding. And they're facing this way, watching this bottom. We want to be pretty careful sliding up through here. Like, I'd, I don't want to be in the open past this point, I don't think. Be able to see him, he's right there. Oh, yes. Are you on him? Oh, yeah. He's right behind that log. Yeah, I know. He has a rack over there. Yeah. There he's going to the left. Put your head down here for me. I think he's a two year old buck, don't you? Yeah, he's a two year old. I don't think he's too alarmed though. Like he could never figure out what we were. And the wind is blowing right in my face. It might have swirled just a little bit right there. I could have got up, stood, and shot right there. I just was unsure if it was something I wanted to shoot or not, you know. He was pretty deceiving. Like I think there's probably two of them. He was wide. When I first saw him, he was staring right at me. You can see that wide rack, and I was like, oh, shooter. In that situation, I popped up, I saw him, he was staring down in here because he heard us walking. But I froze, and he gave up on it, and he started walking straight at me. And when he did, he dropped, my, he dropped his head, 
and I, as y'all saw, I ducked and I just scurried back here. I made a bunch of noise doing it, but he couldn't see. We went right on a deer trail. I'm sure he hears deer walking on this all the time. That's a good sign though. If there's a buck out there better than that edge, there's probably more. We gotta get up in one of these trees right here so we can observe a little bit. Well, it's October 19th today. It's my fourth day here in Wisconsin. Tonight I'm hunting on a totally different piece of timber. This is probably only between eight and 10 acres of just straight hardwoods, oaks, and a variety of other trees in here. This little piece is a peninsula. There's water on three sides, and we only own about the tip of the peninsula, so we have to actually access across a marsh slash river. I normally only come out on this property during the very first weekend of bow season when the acorns are falling, and then probably two or three times during the rut, but since I really don't have that opportunity or option this this fall, um, I'm out here today. Most of the time what the deer do out here is they scent check for does and that's why it's normally good during the rut. But like I said, these cold temperatures have had a lot of bucks moving. Hopefully they'll be on their feet. There's actually a fresh scrape right below the tree that was fresh from probably yesterday. And then when I was walking out of the marsh where I crossed that creek, um, I can see a, a really, looks like a really big rub right over here, about 45 yards. So I know there's been a good buck in here in the past couple days, so hopefully he makes a mistake tonight and I get my opportunity at one. There's a shooter right there. 45 yards, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. No way. No way. Oh my god. You're freaking kidding me. That was a giant. Two of them. Well, I just got off the phone with a neighbor that owns this other side of this island. I rewatched the footage. It's just really hard to tell in here where the arrow exactly hits. I mean, he was a lot closer than I thought. I figured he was probably inside of 20, but not 13 yards. That happened about as fast as it could have ever happened. After what's happened with Jake's buck and Ted's buck and even Zach's buck where he put a good shot on it, I'm, I'm pretty worried. <laughs> like, I'm really worried. You just keep playing that shot over and over again in your head. And I mean, I shot him at probably 3.30. I just couldn't tell, like I would like to have seen him go down. That's what you'd always want. Oh my gosh. I'm still really shooken up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get down, send a picture of the arrow and the, like, the first blood to the guys, see what they think, get their opinion, back out, go home, watch the footage on a big screen so I can blow up 
blow it up, but I'm pretty sure I can see blood hit on impact. I'm really hoping that's the case. I know the footage wasn't great, but like it was that or none. Thing looked like a bruiser to me. <laughs> oh my. How f how high are you in the tree? says he just shot a giant in Wisconsin. We've already seen a doe that was getting bumped around by something running around out there. And Logan called about 20 minutes ago and apparently he hit one in Wisconsin. But like I mentioned on the way in here, the idea of tonight's sit is to observe this CRP field up here, right behind the tree here. There's a kind of a marshy river bottom type area that has been dry the past few years. And most years, bucks bed down in those willows when it's dry since it's so wet they're forced up here onto this crp this is an awesome spot and you can see a long way out across some pretty good bedding cover tim <laughs> that's the same one you've been watching oh there's another deer just stood up out here in this field doe she just stood up behind that cedar in front of him See her? To the left. Yep. We just had a doe stand up out here in front of us. She was bedded right up underneath one of those cedar trees in the grass. And that same buck that we walked up on earlier that bounded off across the field. See, that's why we constantly tell you guys, if you bump deer, especially a buck, and he doesn't spook real hard, they're not going very far. You know, he just bounded off across that field. Just went in that next little finger of woods. Probably laid back down and now he's up again. Working his way back over here. If they don't smell you and see you at the same time, they don't, and they don't spook real hard, they're not going very far. two-year-old buck, I think. He's back up closer to the primary bedding. Pretty quick. It's getting on towards closing time, and Jake and I got a little bit of a paddle to get out of here, so we're going to go ahead and climb down. But I think we ended up seeing, what, three bucks in eight or 10 does and fawns all together. Like spots like this a lot because you're putting yourself in a situation where you can kill a buck, potentially call to a buck that you see off in the distance. And you can learn a lot about the area without diving in there and messing up too much. We got a high wind day tomorrow out of the Northwest. So we're gonna be able to slide around quite a bit and learn even more and potentially creep up on one on the ground or, or possibly set up on one in this field in the morning. I mean, the property, or the piece that I was Actually, hunting was what? How, how much ten acres of hardwoods is out there? Ten? Yeah, maybe. About ten acres. Ten acres of hardwoods, surrounded by water on three sides, and private on the other side. So we crossed that river to get out there, and like, I kind of just went out there on a limb and just hoped for the best. And coming up here to Wisconsin, hunting at my house, hunting at my 
where I've grown up hunting, shot my first buck out in this property, and just being able to come up here and harvest a bow buck like this is unbelievable to me. I couldn't be happier, honestly. I was really just hoping for a nice two-year-old buck and just to have this three or four-year-old bruiser come by is just unbelievable.